again, welcome to my Schland. Uh, we are currently in Reykjavik, it's night, it's seven, and you are in my knitting studio. Uh, my name is Ellen Magnusson, and tonight I'm going to teach you how to knit. <laughs> uh, it will be a bit of a challenge because we have very little time, but hopefully it will go all right and we'll actually do our best. Uh, before we start, I still want to tell you a little bit about the history of knitting in Iceland. So, knitting is a very old craft, the most ancient of, of all. It started as fishing nets and evolved, so it's like loops that are made from a thread. Um, and it's a very old craft, but it came to Iceland relatively late, only in the 16th century. Uh, so it probably came from Dutch uh, or German merchants uh, and once it came, it kind of became immediately very popular for different reasons. Uh, uh, one of the reasons, of course, is that we have a lot of sheep in Iceland, which means a lot of raw material, the wool, and when the first settler came, they came with all the sheep and all the craft techniques like the weaving and null beating. But the knitting came later and it took off right away because uh, it was so easy, like for today. I mean, we can take it in a pocket, we can go everywhere with it, we can do anywhere. Contrary to uh, weaving, we don't need a lot of space to have a loom and we don't need a lot of material to start. We can just start with just one little piece of thread. So that's one of the reasons why it took off. Uh, and then it's not that it just get popular, but it become the second most important economy in Iceland after the fishing. And everybody started to knit, like men, women, children, and what were they knitting? Just about anything. <laughs> Everything was knitting. And then a, 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 a great deal was exported to the working classes in, um, in Europe. Um, so that was the economical part, but then people were also knitting for themselves. So we do know what was exported because at the time Iceland was a Danish colony and the commerce was a monopoly from the Dane. And there are registers where we know like 126,000 pairs of mitten were sent that year and that many socks and so forth. So that was quite uh, the thing. So uh, this trade like continue until the end of the 19th century where suddenly little by little it fade out. And, um, and um, Iceland gained its independence. Uh, and then today, if I'm going very fast, because we have to keep the time going, uh, probably the main representative of knitting today, if you know about it, it's the Icelandic lopi sweater. So I have a few here that you can see. And this sweater also is like very Icelandic, very popular. It's actually relatively recent. and. Uh, it was designed only in the 50s, uh, 1950s, um, so uh, th this is inspired by old mittens, old patterns books from Iceland, it takes inspiration in the nature and somehow it goes like very well, so it became a very popular sweater. But before that time there was lots of other type of knitting, so as you can imagine lots of socks, um, lots of mittens of all sorts. Um, the Icelandic people were very good at spinning very fine yarn, so they made lots of very nice shells uh, and lots of beautiful handwork, like this one, uh, which is maybe some tradition that are less known. Uh, one of them also is the shoe insert. So people were wearing those type of shoes in Iceland and then they did some sort of an insert in it. Um, there were very many beautiful of them, 
with all sorts of patterning. And then for the everyday, they were using like some simple strapping sets. And this is actually how you would teach little children how to knit. Because when you need to shoe insert, you only need to make kind of a little square in guard to stitch. And then you can add a little bit of stripes. You can use all the leftovers. And then it's also a way to, um, you know, make it a little bit uh, more achievable because one more stripe, one more stripe, it helps you going when you get bored and you don't want to continue knitting. So if you want to know more about the Icelandic knitting tradition, uh, I will suggest that my book, Icelandic Handits, where I'm talking about it all, and there are also some patterns in it, and I also wrote a notebook about the shoe inserts. And this is really what I do. Um, I'm really passionate about the Icelandic knitting, the old knitting and the modern one. And I do believe that the best way to preserve the old tradition is to give them new life. So I always try to do that. And the coat I'm wearing, for example, is actually inspired by a shoe insert. Like this one. It's a flower pot body. But I'm getting really hot. So I'm going to take it off and we're going to start knitting. So I'm going to show you a little bit, use the opportunity, show you a little bit the sweaters. And then we're going to get ready. So I'm going to put the camera a little bit down so you can actually see my hands, which is important. Close the drawers. So what are we going to knit? We are going to knit a little shoe insert, sort of, that we're going to use a wrist warmer. So here I have one. So it's, it's just a simple uh, garden stitch squares with a few stripes. So it's a very easy project. And it's relatively short and not as, uh, not as uh, long as a goddess's scarf or something. And the inspiration that I got for this one was this shoe insert. So I just choose the color, the same color and add the same type of stripe. So before we start, 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 there's one thing I want to show you. It's what knitting is really so I prepared kind of a big loop I'm going to show it to you so this is really what knitting is it's loops all sorts of loops that you put together so we have all those loops and then with those loops we have a thread and I'm going to do it with my hand so you have a loop here and you make another loop going inside, like this. And go in the loop and inside. So it works with just the hand, but it's not very convenient. And if you're going to knit um, <laughs> very small, it doesn't work. So it's a good idea to put those loops on a stick, which we call a needle. And those loops, we call them stitch. And so this way, they're not going away. And then you can continue uh, making those loops. But then you can use this maybe to help you grab the yarn at the back. Here, and put it through. Hmm. And then those, they always want to... So put them on the needles. You can also put them on the needles like this and then it helps you you know working those loops so you go into one loop and then you grab the yarn with the other needle and so forth so so the the, the knitting needles are actually some tools that we are using 
All right, so I just wanted to show you that, like this interlocking, how it works. But now we're going to forget a bit about that because this is like really heavy, a rather monstrous needle. And we're going to start from the beginning. So those loop in Iceland, we call them uh, likia and it's, it's a stitch. We call that a stitch. And before we start knitting, we need to put, uh, to make uh, the first loop and put them on the needle. So to do so, so I, I took some, some needles that are double pointed needles and that would be the type of needles that um, old Icelandic people will, would use. The circular needles and all that, they didn't exist yet. And then we take a piece of yarn and we have to put them on the loop. So we start making what we call a slip knot. So it's the first loop. So to do that, you go inside here, make a loop like this, then you go with your finger inside and you grab the yarn, the one where the skein is. And then you go through and that makes your first slip knot. So um, I'm going to do it again and maybe come a little bit closer. So here are my tail. So just take like this, make the loop. Like this, go inside and then grab the yarn and pull. And this is a slip knot. So you don't tighten it too much, but then we take the needle and we put it on the needle and then we can tighten. And this is our first loop or our first stitch. Um, and then to continue knitting, uh, we, we call this putting loops on needle, casting on, to cast on. Um, and there are many ways to do that. So in Iceland, in the old days, the little children, they were uh, taught how to cast on with what we called hundafit, and in which the dog cast on. So it's a very simple one uh, that I'm going to show you. And it's very valid. So it's, it's just that you make loops, like you, you, like you twist this to make a loop and then you put this loop on the needle. So I'm doing it again, you twist it and you put it on the needle. So I'm going to start again from the beginning. And if you have had the time to get your, uh, your knitting needle, you can do it with me. So let's start again. So we make the first stitch, which is a slip knot. We make this loop, go inside from underneath, grab the yarn and make the first slip knot. And then we secure it and that's it. So we have a tail here and we're going to make the rest of the stitches with this yarn. And now we just make the loop. So we, we just make those loops like twisting the yarn and putting them on the needle. So you can do it, uh, for example, of you, on your thumb or on your index, putting it like this. But really what we're doing is that twisting this up and putting it on the needle. So I like to do it sometimes on my index, like this, here and here. So you take your index, you go, around like to make the loop and then you go inside around inside around inside some people do it on the thumb Some people use two fingers or three. So 
So, I don't know how many stitches I have cast on, but I'm going to count them. So, one, I already usually count two at a time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's 16. 17, 18, 19, and 20. So this is enough for the beginner. So we have now cast on our first stitches. And I hope you find it relatively straightforward. And it's the easiest way, really. Uh, so now we're going to start knitting. So we're going to, to do uh, with the yarn what I was showing previously, like all the loops with my fingers, but we're going to use the needles. And we're going to do it the Icelandic way. That is, um, th there are different ways to hold the needle and to hold the yarn. The main two is like one which called the English way. It's wrapping around with the right hand. And then... Uh, in Iceland, we pick and we use our left fingers. And for this reason, if you are left ending, left, uh, if you are, um, um, yeah, if, if, if you, if you are left handed, it, it, it's really not a problem to learn this method that is sometimes called German method or continental method. And remember, Icelandic people, they learn from the German or the Dutch too. So first we have to turn it. So we always have, when we knit our yarn on, 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 on the right. And then we're going to introduce our needle in the stitch here and make the stitch. But how do we hold those needles? So one easy way is like you holding your needle like this between the index and the thumb, a bit like a pen. And then you wrap your yarn around your index and then you go under the three other fingers and, and then you hold your needle so your yarn is trapped here and this is what will help held this so I start again put the fingers here here And then sometimes it's nice to put it again, wrapping again the little finger. So let's do it again. Holding the needle, wrapping here, around the three fingers, and now we are ready. So we're going to go with the needle inside the loop. So it may be a little bit difficult because those are just loops, they're not connected, so they, they, they may be a little bit tight or too loose. So just unloosen them so you can go inside. So we go inside from the left to the right here, and then we stop at the back and like we cross the needles. And then we're going to take that yarn and pull it through. So you see the, the, the first stitch is not attached, so it, it may be very tight. You just untighten it. So we go inside this loop and then we're going to grab that one. So, so this is where the fingers is important because it wants to be too loose. And then, and then if it's too loose, you can't grab it and you, can, you can't pull it through. And this is what we call the tension. So it's important. So we can do it again, put it here around the fingers and you can put it around your, your little pinky if you want to. So this one stay uh, relatively straight. And then we go inside here and we can draw the loop. So now that the loop is made from the other loop, we can let both of them go off the needle. So let's do that again. You go inside the needle. Like I said, it's a bit difficult for the first row. Letting the all right, you go grab this yarn and you see how it goes inside the loop 
and then you put it when once you it's got through the loop then you can let both go off the needle and sometimes you can use your index to put it through here like this so you go inside here around and here so um, side go around and and sometimes this stitch is it, it you can't take it through then you can use your index again and hold it like this so it's easier to pull it through the loop here and here and again so it's again sometimes a bit difficult because like I said, the first row, this dog cast on, it's, it's not knitted. So sometimes the loop is a little bit tight. You just untighten them and then it's easy to go inside. Go under, you grab the yarn and pull it through using your index or not. Here and again. Here. and again and then if you yarn get too loose you, you can just pull it a little bit so it's relatively tensed here not too much but not too loose and this is something that you get only with practice I mean there's no other way Again here, tighten, so it fits a little bit tight, don't despair, just pull it a little bit through so you can easily go inside and here we go. So the more you're going to practice, oops, I missed the, the loop here, I'll just put it back. The more you're going to practice and the easier it will get. So it's all about tensioning the yarn on your left hand, on your index, and taking one stitch at a time. So now I'm finished all the rows here. See? And this is what's called one row. So now when we're done with this one row, we just turn and then we start on the other side. So in exactly the same manner. So this is what knitting is about really so at the beginning it may be a little bit wonky but do not despair it will come little my little and you will notice now that it's much easier to go into the um, it's much easier to go into the stitch because now they are knitted you know it's it, no, no now they are knitted so they're all the same uh, dimension they're not like getting too tight
So this video is really about learning how to knit, like for the beginner, beginner. Um, I hope there was no misunderstanding. But if you are an English knitter and you want to knit the continental way, this is the one for you. And again, you can always, you know, if you mix the stitch, you can always put it back on the needle and start again here, like this. So now we have knitted two rows and then we turn and then we continue. And this is really what knitting is. So what makes it more fun when you start knitting is maybe introducing some new colors. So um, for this wrist warmer, I had this shoe insert uh, idea. And for this one, um, I'm going to use either that one, a white one. I have some more white here. Uh, yeah, or maybe that one. I'm going to use that one. So now I'm going to start introducing some stripes and I'm going to make uh, two stripes in black. So, and then one in red, one in blue, two black, one red, one blue, one red and two black. So I have some colors here and we're now going to introduce a new color. So I'm going to do it right away. And to introduce a new color, it's really very easy. You just start here. And then um, I usually will put my stitch my needle and you insert it in the stitch like you used to, but instead of using that one, you take your other yarn colors, you fold it in two and you put it on the needle and you draw the loop. So this loop is like, ooh, like very loose, but it doesn't matter. And then don't forget to continue knitting, not with the tail, the very short hand, but with the skin. And then we're going to knit in the same manner. So with the yarn here around the index, under the three fingers, and then you grab your needle. So you're holding your yarn and your needle at the same time. And then you continue. Knitting. So I'm going to try to make it closer but for our beginners so you can see and the focus is all right now so you can use this like this or don't need it so we sometimes do all kind of little movement and then if this one gets too loose it gets you just pull it pull it again or put it back in place here and here i see there are some people that are wondering what yarn i'm using um, i'm using lietlupi from istex uh, i'm using that one because it's it's icelandic wool to begin with and then it's a so-called iron way uh, that that is um, it, the, the the way tells you how thick the yarn is. So this one is kind of a medium. It's like really good because the you use usually a needle size that is not too fine and not too big. Uh, the big needle I was using at the beginning, for example, uh, you may think it goes very fast, but it's not. They are like so big in your hands. And then when you use tiny little needles, it can be also hard on your hands and you need to have a good sight. All right, so now I am at the end of my first row with my 
my other color. And you see on the on the back side, it makes like little bumps, which is normal. So we're going to work those stripes always working like two rows. So I usually know where is up the wrong side and the back side. And you always want to make two rows and always change colors on the same side because otherwise you're not going to have a stripe regular. You have some stripes with some little white and some stripes that are plain. So what we are doing now is called garter stitch. Garda Pireon in Icelandic. I can see some comments. There are some people who say that this is for total beginners. And yes, it is absolutely a class for total beginners. Um, how many stitches is I cast on? For that one, uh, I use um, number 4.5 millimeter or US 6 needle and I cast on about 20 stitches. The number of stitches you cast on will tell you how long or how big you want your uh, knitting to be. So the more stitches you cast on, the larger it will be. And then the needle size itself, this is what makes the loop. So it will also determine um, how big those loops are and how dense the fabric is. So for example, uh, when I started, I, I knitted with like very, very big needle, like size 20. And of course this made like a very loose fabric. I still have it here, I mean, oops. I mean, this is like so loose. I mean, you, it's just full of hole. All right, so we made one. Now we can turn again and then we can continue like this. So if we want to take another color, we do the same and we take the red and the blue and continue. So let's just say I'm going to take the red and then I will want my, my yarn. If I'm not using it anymore, I will just break it and, and then I will use another piece of yarn to later. Continue. Oh, I had to make two with the black on this shoe insert. Let me see. Yeah, this one is like two. You can see there is like two little guard reach. So we're supposed to make another one in black. So I don't know if I will have the time to, uh, if we will have the time to finish it because I want to show you other things for you, the beginners. Um, as, yeah, I think you can you can watch the video again. It is recorded. So this is getting a little bit boring because I'm just knitting now. And you can see, look, I'm tensioning actually my yarn. I'm holding it here. So there are many different ways. You have to find your own ways to do your things. But remember, take one, put it around your fingers and then find a way to let it lock tension on your index. So here we go. And some people are knitting so fast you can barely see the hands moving. I'm not going to do that because, uh, well, you want to learn and to see. Sometimes it helps like to kind of make a little movement and wrap around, but it's just as easy to use this one and kind of pick up the yarn. Some people also use the, 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 the right needle to just kind of wrap it and pull it through, wrap it and pull it through, wrap around and pull it through. So 
here we are so we're going to turn again and you can see that this is our uh, wrong side and we're going to knit the next row and then we will be able to change color again so we're going to, to show you that again oops I don't want the white inside here and knit 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 so this is this is really um, what people they were doing uh, and they would learn to knit and knit uh, in the dark the knitting would usually take place into the uh, winter time and I have a huge uh, light now <laughs> it's like I can barely see in my eyes but they would just have like candlelight or like uh, with a tallow and so that would make the knitting a little bit more difficult and it was said that it was improving your skills to knit in the dark <laughs> and that's true because you can find the the stitches on your fingers even if you close your eyes you know and people were knitting so much because like i tell you it was uh, for the uh, a lot of knitting was made for the uh, exportation. So I don't need the black anymore, so I'm just going to break it. So Lopi is uh, very easy to break. I, I, I leave an end that is not too long, but not too short either, because then we're going to um, do something with it and that I will show you as well. And so now we're going to introduce uh, our red color again. So I have two rows, so I make the red. So I'm going to do it again. For those who are not sure, so you put your needle into the loop and then this first stitch, you just fold your yarn in two and put the loop on the needle. So Again, I have this yarn that is not, not too short, not too long. And then one common mistake is to continue knitting with the tail and not with the yarn. And so, and then we put it on our index and we secure it by wrapping it or, and then we continue knitting. Oops, I went into two stitches. So pull the knit through and then here you can really see that you need to take this one off the needle. So this method is just one method to knit with the right hand. The other method is to, um, that, that is most known is to use the yarn to use the right finger to wrap the yarn around. It takes a little bit more um, time and energy. So it makes a bit more movement. Personally, uh, I do both usually. Um, it will depend a bit what I'm doing. Um, and sometimes I hurt in my shoulder for some reason. So I will just change and go from one to another. So I hope everybody is is, uh, is about following. And now we turn again and we're going to start again from this side. And I'm going to need so two rows because if I change color now, then I will have those lines. So I want to have the color change only on the right side. So put it here. Again, hold it on your fingers, around, wrap it. Um, some people also do it sometimes, just starting to... Where is my yarn? Oops. Yeah. 
oops, starting to wrap it around the thing, pinky first and then going with the index afterwards. But really it is exactly the same. So I don't want to confuse you by showing you too much ways. So let's just continue. There are some people here that have been commenting that they know how to knit, but I still find it very enjoyable, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> All right. So we're getting to the end of, oops, of this row. Actually, I find it, I don't like to, to wrap it myself on my, oh, I have some candles. Oops. Um, to wrap it around my pinky because um, I, I have I find I have enough tension in my other fingers so I, I'd rather have it like this and like I said I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tensioning it here around my needle but everybody is different and again this is something you really have to find out and there is a rhythm to it so I'm sure you want to know um, it's going to be to introduce the next color which is blue <gasps> this blue but uh, yeah <laughs> that's the thing you always want to go to the next trip and it helps you to choose color because right away it makes something like really nice um, and it's very soothing that's right so um, uh, here you can see if I go here if I, I'm going to break the red because if I keep the red here, then I will have to, to go with it all the way up and it will make a, a, a big loop on the side. So I'd rather break it. Again, not too short, not too long. You can use scissors if you want, but I'd rather break the yarn. Enough. And then we can start with the next color. It's very soothing. Once you get the hook of it, also it can be very stressful. I remember the first time I learned how to knit when I was seven. It was so frustrating. I knitted so tight. I could barely um, move my needles. So go under it. Hip. Here, the blue. And in the old days, so people will, usually they didn't have the radio or the television, so they would have people like knitting and then someone would be singing or telling stories or, or singing some psalms or all sorts of things happening. And, and usually they, they were playing some music and it will help like put a kind of a cadence to the knitting because you had to knit so much. It was not that much fun to knit, um, you know. I think the, the men, uh, we, they didn't have to, but there were recommendations from the state. They were supposed to knit like the four to six pair of socks per week. And if you are a more advanced knitter, you know this is quite a lot. <laughs> and those socks were going to, uh, to Europe. Yeah, so I have the next color. It's nice. So we could continue like this together, but I, I want you to show you now how to actually stop your knitting. So uh, I have made one little wrist drummer for me and I needed the other pair. So you see, I always already made the stripes and I have all the ends on one side. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side. So all my ends are on the same side. And uh, well, to know how long you, you need, you just put it on, on, your, on your hand and you, you wrap it around, you know, like this. And you know, it's the same. So I just count here and I did the same for that one. I'm going to take the candle away because it's clicking on on my needle so when we finish we want to what we call bind off that is stopping the stitches 
And here you can see I'm, I'm using a, um, I'm not using double pointed needle, but I'm using a circular needle. So I have this string that I don't need, but it just goes all around. So, so to, to bind off, we're going to need, start knitting two stitches. So one, two. So we have two stitches and now we're going to take these stitches here and pull it over that one. Take it here and then you pass it over. So when you pass it over, this one tends to want to, you know, just go away. So take your little index, hold it so you can go over it and then you can slip this ball. And now we need another stitch. And then we get that one and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pass it over the next stitch. And again, I'm holding it a little bit with my index so it doesn't, you know, all slip away when I do that. So taking the loop away. So I don't know if you can see, see, see that this loop, I put it over the other loop. So this one is inside. And then here you want to tighten, but not too much because otherwise, um, uh, you know, you don't want to have it too loose or too tight. Again, it's a matter of tension. Uh, knitting is about practice and you get the tension right. It's, it's in your fingers. So making here, here and pass it over. Knitting one more. And then I put my fingers pull it through and you see it's just like now the stitches are secure mm, the focus is is all right so we continue like this It's very cold here where I am. <laughs> There's problem with the heat and it's very much pretty much like in a turf house, you know, a little bit cold and the only thing it is not this dark. So I'm going to put it away from me. There's someone asking again, and uh, yeah, I think you can uh, the stream live. It will it will stay, I think, for a little while, so you can get the link. I I, I will put the link also um, on on my website and on the social media. So, taking it up and over. So I'm almost done, as you can see. So it's quite nice. Here we go. So this is the last stitch. So I pass this over and here, um, here I will just break the yarn and then I pull it through and then I can tighten. And this way it doesn't make any um, any kind of uh, little hairs or something. And so now we are done. We have finished uh, our little piece of knitting. So it's a little garter stitch square and we're going to make it as a waist rubber. So when I break my yarn, I actually left enough uh, yarn so I can sew both hands together so it doesn't show but so i'm going to grab up 
my things so I need a needle so I use a pointy needles and we have all those hands here so before we sew we're going to darn those ends in so uh, I'll, I'll use always like a, a kind of a pointy needles and going through the fabrics to really secure them I know there are some darning needles that are very big but uh, I prefer to go through the fabric and it's very easy with the lopi sometimes you can't but so so first we have to thread the needle so if you want to try to go this way uh, Good luck. I mean, I I, I can't do that. So, uh, but you do here. You fold it in half, and then you hold it very tight. Remove the needles. So the yarn is in my. Trying to let the focus go, and then you see when I open, it kind of blooms. So I'm going to open it slowly. To let it blooms into into the needle it's not the the biggest needle i chose all right and then i mean sometimes you want to so this is the right side and the wrong side so i'm going to go inside the stitches themselves i mean so, sometimes when you're darning some people will go underneath both but it, it's really much tighter to go just through them with a tight needle, especially with acrylic yarn because it separates so easily. So you always try to go in the same color you were in. And, and you make sure that the needle doesn't show or doesn't show too much on the other side. And then you pull through. Here we go. And the, the Icelandic yarn is very, um, uh, f f f you know, she's, it's lots of hairy, so it holds very well. Uh, I mean, if you have some slippery yarn, then you may need to do other things, which I'm going to show you. Oh, it's the video for 30 days. So again, you know, I'll just fold the yarn in two Take it away and then choo, I'm going to let it bloom up inside the needle. I actually do that with a regular sewing thread. It's my daughter who taught me that. I had taught her this method to her with the yarn. And then, so I'm going inside just, you know, like very quickly, just inside and hope. And if you have a slippery yarn, Sometimes it's good to go in one direction and then to go into the other, just a little bit, just, 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 just a little bit back, just like to make some kind of hook. So we have a few more hands to darn in. I actually don't see my hands. I only see the phone, <laughs> but anyway, and then I'm going to go through the red. I'm going to show you close and go here and then I have one more red and black so that's a lot of yarn some people hate it there are little tricks that exist for more advanced knitters to avoid this but it's a little bit too early when you just started to knit for the first time to learn that. But there's so much that you can learn, little tricks. And, oops, I was holding the yarn at the same time. So here, and then I still have the black one. And you see that this made all those ends much tighter as soon as you done them in. 
you know, it just makes the edge much nicer than it, that it was. Just by him. So now I have the uh, brown one. Um, I can see some people are happy with the way to thread the needle. I had, <laughs> I, I remember once I was, I was, I was with my mom and she was complaining that she always had so much wool in her mass and I was like, but why? And it's because she was always like, uh, yeah, putting the yarn into her mouth and trying to thread it in two. So this is really life saving. All right. So now all my yarns here, all my ends have been so-called darn in. Hmm. Here, uh, what's happening here? I think I went too far. So I'm just going to take it here. And I need some scissors. You know that you can never find the scissors when you need them. Yes, here they are. So I'm going to cut that one. So sometimes we're afraid to cut the knitting. So one good trick is to, you know, pull it a little bit. So it's kind of free a bit. You pull it a little bit, you cut it close. And then when you stretch it again, then the little hands disappear. So I pull it a little bit, just tiny bit. Thrill it a little bit. Hop. And then hop. Yeah. And so now we have done our hands and it looks already much better. And now what we have to do is to uh, actually sew those things together. So just the edge together. So we make our rounded uh, little wrist warmers. So here is my knitting needle. So I'm going to thread the needle again. And we want to make it in a way that it's not too much visible, you see? You, you, well, you can see it a little bit, but barely. This is where the, the seam is. So we're going to make a flat one. I hope I will be able to show you properly. So I'm here and I'm going to go into the corner there. And then we're going to go into uh, each stitch. I'm going to try to show you well. It's not so easy. So I'll go under that stitch here on one side and then I go with my needle under the stitch here on the other side on the other edge and then hold it together so here you can see there is the little valve so I go into the hole here and poke in between come back here And then on the other side, I have this like kind of little bump, so I'll go under the bump. I hope that makes sense. It makes kind of a very nice flat seam. we go so mm -hmm. but you get the point so it takes it takes as much long to finish this way I'm going to go underneath here so you see it just makes a nice it looks like it's not the same color, but it is. It's just the light. It's so weird. Um, someone is asking me if it's the same yarn that, that is 
used for the yarn club that I'm doing at the moment with a sock club, but no, it's not. Um, the yarn I'm using is much, much um, finer for the socks. Yes, so someone is asking if we try to match the stitches. Yes, we're trying. So we have this edge here that we are attaching heat. So it's like one stitch at a time. That's why it takes ages. But when I don't have enough yarn, I was a little bit too short with it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm simply going to down and in. So I'm going to the other direction. I go here through again through the knitting fabric pull it back and then I'm going to cut it and first we are here I'm going to use this end here to finish the seam because this way I won't have to darn in again So, in the old days, the little uh, Icelandic uh, boys and girls who would learn how to knit, they would not make wrist warmers, they would make shoe inserts. And so they would not be learning this, but once they would be doing that, finish this, they would learn how to pick up stitches here and then how to decrease which is decreasing, it's like you need two stitches at a time. So it, it can go very quickly. You can, you can make four men shape like relatively quickly. And we're almost done, but not quite. Uh, there's one important thing with the knitting that is sometimes a bit overlooked is the finishing and what sometimes we call the blocking. It's very important to, uh, wash or let at least soak into water your uh, your piece of knitting okay i'm finished here and then i go just through the fabric just anywhere and here we go so once I'm finished with that, normally what I should do is um, washing it. It will both uh, soften it and it will also relax the fiber. So you should let it soak at least for 20 minutes in a lukewarm water. And, and then we squeeze the water out and you can wrap it in a towel or you can also put it in... Um, in the washing machine, uh, in the spinning program. If it's something little like that, you can also use the, you see the, these things to, to spin the, the salad, take the water off and then let it dry flat. And it will make it like, you know, fluffier, softer and so forth. Uh, in the old days in Iceland, everything that was knitted was a tiny little bit felted. And that was also the case for the shoe insert. So they would not be felted like to the full, but they would be um, uh, felted enough. And then people would put them under the bed to keep them flat. So I, I have a relatively older pair of shoe inserts here and it's, I can feel it. It's a, it's a much tighter um, kind of uh, texture. So it's been felted a bit, but it could be felted a little bit more. It would depend a little bit what the shoe insert will made for. So uh, let's just pretend I've finished with my waist warmer and so now I have a pair. I have two of them. All right. So that was a very easy project. 
Uh, and I think it's much nicer to make something small, that's something too big. And then you can make lots of little things with those little squares. And it's useful, you can use it right away. Uh, someone is asking if the knitting has started, but uh, yes, it has actually started. And the shoe insert is the uh, was the inspiration for for the for the pattern. So I'm going to put the camera again a little bit up. Those are my little assistants, and I'm trying to go on the other side. So I hope you enjoyed it. So, ooh. so now that I'm here, I can't really um, see your comments because I'm on the other side uh, of the phone. But this was really like a course for uh, for beginners, and I hope you enjoyed it. And 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 that people who are used knitting with their right hand, they enjoyed it as well and learned something. Um, you can find me online. Uh, on my website icelandicknitters.com and uh, when the covid will be over i will start again my hiking and knitting tours um, and hopefully <laughs> it will be uh, next year um, so it's a nice way to discover iceland with your needles so if you're interested in the knitting history and knitting tradition um, yeah i, I mean you are most welcome um, and also to visit my studio. So um, I hope you enjoyed this course and I'll, I'm, maybe I'm going to go on the other side of the, of the camera again and look at some comments because I think we're like getting to an end now. It was very short, very challenging and I thank you so much for uh, the patient and, and um, you know, following with it on, and I hope it will uh, help you to get going. Um, the shoe insert is the only thing that is knitting back and forth in Iceland, otherwise everything is knitting in the round. So, and then eventually cut if you need something. So this is something to look forward to. And this can be the next step, making a call, for example like knitting in the round so i hope you enjoy the uh you enjoy the light so i'm going back underneath and i will answer any questions you have all right so everybody is just thinking um, um i mean i can show you a little bit around maybe while, while we are finishing, so um, here I have a drawer that is full of shoe inserts. So those were uh, those that were more uh, more for every more you know they required a lot more work those and different techniques called intarsia. So but it's still got a stitch. Um, and here I have. Some here I have shelves and maybe I'm going to show you this one. It's a very beautiful shelf. I'm going to put the camera on hold. So it's inspired by a piece in the uh, museum, a textile museum in Blentos, and it's all in color stitch. So it's kind of this long shirt, there's little holes. But it's basically what we've been making, just find a yarn and, uh, you know, longer to make, <laughs> but stripes and knit stitch. So this can open lots of possibility. Um, yeah. All right. So I think my time is done now and I really have to go. Um, so yes, again, you can uh, follow me up on my website and 
uh, someone is asking, I mean, everything that you <laughs> were able to see, there is a pattern for it, either in a book or, or online. I, I, I mean, I sell the single patterns as PDF. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of really easy to get it, even when the post is not working so well. <laughs> Those were the past months now. Uh, you can order the books on my website and uh, I'm also uh, going to have a distributor now, so it will be much easier. Um, Deep South Fibers is distributing my book Icelandic and Knits in the US. So mm. I don't know if it's nice to, to see this. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> mm. I want to show you also maybe a little bit of Icelandic wool. While I'm talking, so someone is asking about the the shoe warmer. So no, people are not using them anymore. I mean, uh, those those, those uh, were using soft skin made of uh, fish skin for for those with the stripes or leather skin, uh, but. Uh, People who, who still used it um, might be the, um, some 20, 30 years ago as slippers. I'm using them <laughs> as slippers, uh, but they don't really use them. I mean, uh, the, when people start using um, those type of shoes that are the soft shoes, uh, they stop using the shoe inserts. So, and those are not slippers, but shoes, yes. Well, I really have to go now. So um, I wish you a good afternoon, evening, night, <laughs> whatever time it is uh, for you. As for me, I'm going to have uh, dinner. And uh, maybe I see you online or maybe I see you in Iceland one day. And if you're here, you're most welcome to come and visit the studio. So, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> have a nice... I've nice time and thank you, thank you for your time.